I study models of complex systems, let's say a cell, a very complex collection of molecules, and I try to make mathematical models which capture the essence of certain processes which are happening. So for example, how do cells move? And I use methods from, from theoretical physics to try to, to, to develop these mathematical models. This is clearly a very complicated system, so a large part of the modeling that I do is trying to identify what are the essential elements of this system. And this is, I think, where my background as a theoretical physicist really comes, comes into its own. Although it may sound as though what Tanya and I do, that we do very different things, in fact, we're, we're using the same approach. So we both have a background in mathematical physics and theoretical physics, and we both use that background to, to model the thing that we want to understand. So Tanya models things that are very practical. I use my background to model questions in, in number theory questions to do with prime numbers and the Riemann zeta, for instance, which have been around for 100, 150 years and which are as yet unanswered. And so what we aim to do is to use a technique that actually originates in physics called random matrix theory. It turns out that, amazingly, surprisingly, uh, there's a connection between these number theoretical functions, which, which are all connected with prime numbers and, and very sort of abstract, you know, pure type of mathematics. Another thing which is of particular interest to me is how one could efficiently design some machine which is very small, as small as, let's say, one of our cells, that could move autonomously, efficiently. For this, the essential part of making such a system is identifying what are the key ingredients that will make it work. What we've done is to model a biological system, and then also model a synthetic system, but then use ideas from both to help us in our understanding of how one can quantitatively describe these systems. You often have groups of people working from very different backgrounds. So you might have, as well as people doing experiments, maybe chemists, physicists, biologists. You might also have engineers or mathematicians who might be making models of, of these systems. And actually, um, you often find that the kind of models that I and my collaborators make are the models which try to capture the essence of the, of the system. And then this other person can then fill in the details of of exactly how this sort of this, if you want, machine works. So and, and of course, so we tend not to model all the way till to the to the last detail of, of the system. We we make models which capture the qualitative behavior, and then usually we stop because because usually that's the bit we like, if you want. Mathematicians do mathematics because we're curious, right? There's a question out there that no one knows the answer to, and we just, we want to know what the answer is. And so over the years, you know, mathematicians have invented mathematical structures and methods, and then sometime in the future, you know, it could be 10 years, it could be 100 years, but someone else will see a use for that. So, I mean, all the technology we have around us today is all based on mathematics somewhere along the line, but we do the mathematics because, because we love it.